Hello, it's Adrian with Predictive, back once again with another FEMAP and NX NASTRAN workshop. This workshop is going to be focused on buckling. We've got linear and nonlinear buckling. So when you open up this model and take a look, you can see there's loads, there's constraints, it's already been meshed, it's made with beam elements. So it's ready to go for a static analysis. That also means it's ready to go for a buckling analysis. So from the model info tree, create a new analysis set. We're going to scroll down to option 7 for buckling. All of the defaults here, we'll go ahead and run it right out of the gate. There we go. It runs rather quickly. Now, some of the most important information from a linear buckling analysis is the output set title. You can see here it it's actually kicked out two output sets. The first one is just the same as our linear elastic analysis run. We can deform and you can set up a beam diagram for this one if you want. But this one here, this is important. So our eigenvalue is 0 0.799. What that means is our structure is going to buckle 79, 80% of the applied load. So if we deform this in post-processing, we can switch over to the uh, percent of model and we can go ahead and animate this view. It'll give us a rough idea of what might be buckling under this load. But I always like to go ahead and verify my linear buckling analysis with nonlinear analysis. We'll turn off the post for this one. We don't really know any of our stresses or true deflections at buckling. All we really know is our buckling load. So we'll go back to the model info tree. Under analysis, we'll create a new analysis. This time, it's going to be option 10, nonlinear static. This is solution sequence 106. And for this, we actually need to drill in to the analysis manager and modify some of the settings. So we'll page through until we get to this page here, the nonlinear control options. I'm going to choose to use 10 load increments. That means it's going to apply 10% of the load, reevaluate the stiffness, apply 10% more, and carry on until we either converge or diverge. The other thing I want to change here is I want all intermediate output. In the case that it doesn't converge, I want to see all of the output steps along the way. Let's make sure we have boundary conditions the same as we did with the linear, and we'll go ahead and analyze. Okay, over in the analysis manager, we can see our matrix history, and we can also see a non list non-linear history and a load step convergence. It runs for a bit and then we get a fatal error. Let's check out this fatal error. Scroll down to the bottom of the list and there we go. Stopped problem due to failed convergence. Let's look at the non-linear history. You can see this is our load factor and these are the number of iterations. So as the analysis progressed on incrementing 10% of the load at a time. It hit about 80%, jumped up to 90, failed to converge, dropped back down, and kind of fished around here until finally failing at about 80% of the load. When we look at our result sets, it'll tell us what load step we were at. So here you can see 10%, 20%, up to about 80%, and at that point we start to see instability. The load step goes smaller and smaller. So what I like to do is grab all of these, and we can do a multi-set animation. And for this, I'm going to switch back over to actual deformation. So you can see the first portion of the load loading up, linear behavior, at a certain point these members start to buckle outward. What I like to do for additional post-processing on a buckling load is plot the deflection versus the load. So for that, we're going to go into Tools, 
and we want to look for the charting tool. I have some existing data in here. We'll go ahead and clear that out and we'll make a new data series. What we want to look at is a vector versus an output set value. So we're going to choose this output set value. We don't want to use all output sets. We want to select between output set 3 and output set 19. And our vector is going to be our vertical deflection or our T3 translation. For our location, we can click in that box there and select a node. When we click OK, it creates a plot of this data here. And you can see our load step is along the bottom and our deflection is along the top. So up until we get to right around 80% of our load, our behavior is linear. Once we get to 80%, we start to take smaller and smaller load steps, and we see greater and greater deflection, until at a certain point, we see instability and the analysis crashes. So this, this is our buckling load. You can roll the mouse wheel to zoom in here, and you can see right there at 80%, that's when we start to take smaller steps. So that's our buckling load. All right, thanks for your time and enjoy the workshop.